Hello everyone! Welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val and I am going to be your host uh, for this new segment of the Design Off and I am joined by my new friend Alana. Alana, how are you? Hi, I'm great, Val. <laughs> I'm so excited <laughs> to be able to design with you and create with you today. Um, and we're going to get into uh, some introductions and everything, uh, just in case anyone in chat is unfamiliar with you and your work. But before we do that, uh, I'd love to give a huge shout out to Kyle T. Webster uh, for that wonderful stream. I always have your stream on, Kyle, while I'm prepping for my segment. Um, and it's always a pleasure to watch you work and try to guess what the heck you're drawing. Um, I'm usually wrong about it, but it's it's fabulous nonetheless. A uh, very, very clever guy, that Kyle. Um, and uh, I'd also like to kind of explain what the design off is uh, for those of you who maybe have never been here. So um, every week I get to design and create with a wonderful uh, artist and we have kind of a theme that we design along with. So today Alana and I are going to be illustrating uh, movie posters with a twist. So you guys don't have to follow the twist, but we are going to be doing cat editions of our <laughs> movie posters. So all of our characters are going to be cats because why not? Um, this was an idea uh, from Alana. I think it's a brilliant idea. So obviously Star Wars cats for me. Um, definitely the route we're going. <laughs> um, and uh, Alana, why don't you briefly kind of tell everybody a little bit about you, um, where you're from, what you do, what you love, um, and your favorite flavor of soda pop, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't drink soda pop. But... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess I guess Canada Dry ginger ale. That, but... <laughs> that works. I love ginger ale, so that's perfect. Um, yeah, I'm Alana McCarthy, and I'm from Toronto, Canada, and uh I've been illustrating for almost 20 years uh, professionally. I had an agent and then I worked in-house at an animation studio and now I'm back freelancing again. Um, on the side for about 10 years, I've been running a side business called Geeky Pet, um, where I draw cats and dogs as pop culture icons. So yes. that's kind of where this idea came from. <laughs> very excited for it. Um, I have also taken a look um, at that project and it's fabulous. So if you guys haven't <laughs> seen it, definitely check it out. Um, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm probably going to have to get my hands on some of those um, Star Wars things because obviously it's right up my alley. And who doesn't love cats? I know we have one <laughs> Eric in the chat today who is Perfect. like the, the cat extraordinaire. Um, he is, he's, so Jan Eric has actually been watching the Adobe live streams for many, many years. Um, and one of his things, his little shticks that he used to do when he used to come to the Adobe Twitch channel was to see if he could convince the current designer to add a cat into their design um, every time <laughs> they streamed. So this is the perfect stream yeah. for you, Jan. This is literally um, fabulous. Awesome. So... Um, I am going to flip over to my dual stream here um, and we are going to kind of just jump into our designs and see what we can come up with. Um, I've got my Ben Solo Chronicles starring Cadam Driver that I'm going to be working on. And what are you working on, Alana? I am working on a take on a Pulp Fiction poster. Yes. I'm so yeah. excited. <laughs> Cause I have done tons of star Wars. So I'm kind of star Wars out. <laughs> I don't know how a person could be star Wars out, but I'm super biased. I'm very biased. Um, and, uh, just so everyone knows in chat, you guys are all welcome to join in the illustrating and designing with us. If you guys want to uh, participate, you can post your submissions with the hashtag on social media, hashtag Adobe Live design off. You can post it on Instagram or Twitter tomorrow at the end of our stream. I am going to be actually pulling up social media um, and taking a look at uh, what everybody has posted, give everybody a little shout out and all that good stuff. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to start jumping into it. Um, I think also I should note that rather you are an illustrator or painter or a graphic artist or uh, UI UX designer, you can pretty much interpret this challenge as like whatever you want it to be. Um, if you are somebody who likes to do graphic art and create icons, you can do little cat icons. Um, 
or just pop culture, like movie, character, icons, whatever you want to do. Um, you could design a landing page featuring like the cast of a pop culture movie or something like that. So you can, it's really up to you. You can pretty much do what you want. Um, so nobody, nobody is barred from doing this challenge just because they are not illustrators or painters. Um, thank you, Sam, for posting that hashtag in the chat. Um, Jan Eric is saying Obi Wan Panobi, and <laughs> I am I'm loving the cat puns happening in the chat already. This is this is so brilliant. many. Here we go. All right, <laughs> we are back. I hope everyone can hear us loud and clear. There we go. We had a slight awesome. hiccup there. Um, apologies, everyone. If you want to let me know in chat when you can see and hear us, that would be great. Um, it looks like they've kept the cat puns going for us in the chat, which <laughs> I appreciate. You guys rock. Um, let's see. <laughs> Robert's talking about Roadrunner, which I mean, not the theme, but if you want to illustrate everyone on your movie poster as Roadrunners, that is totally fine. Um, <laughs> That'd be awesome. That works. Yes, everyone is saying, yay, we're back, gang. All right. I am super excited. So I'm going to pop us over to the dual stream and we can jump right back into um, the work. So what I was saying before we um, were cut off from the stream by the internet gods um, <laughs> um i would love to um like just kind of hear you talk more about um your project um where you you know you draw animals and and everything because i was super intrigued um with that project and i'm sure folks in chat um especially with uh today's theme would be really interested in hearing what you do um maybe why you started that project and where they can find it yeah, for sure. Um, well, they can find it at geekypet.net or they can go to my Instagram at geekypet or Facebook at geekypet. Um, so pretty much it started that um, my husband uh, used to draw comics and uh, I'd always be dragged along to comic conventions to help him at the booth. And then um, I just started kind of doodling cats and stuff and I, I did a painting of my two cats dressed up in superhero costumes nice. and uh yeah and then someone asked me for a sketch of their cat uh dressed up as green lantern and I was like oh maybe there's an idea here so I just kind of ran with it and yeah 10 years later <laughs> that's amazing yeah so I mean pre-covid um I would travel to comic conventions and stuff and uh, sell my wares and um, yeah and I've got a little Etsy shop and yeah it's a lot of fun and then I do custom creations too of people's actual pets as well. That is so cool. Um, yeah. I, I also do uh, conventions or did conventions kind of pre- uh, pre COVID. Um, mm -hmm. I did, I mean, I didn't go to, I didn't like make the circuit, you know, cause some people, they really have like a full thing that yeah. they go through and do. Um, I did a lot of, uh, sack animes, um, because I'm very near, um, Sacramento 
Okay. And uh, I did Twitch cons because at the time I was streaming super regularly on Twitch TV. And so they have a creative section. And so they made like an artist alley for their creative streamers, which I thought was super, super cool. Um, oh, that's and awesome. it, it worked, yeah, it worked really, really well because, you know, people are going there for um, kind of like streamer content and stuff, but it's also kind of neat to uh, kind of have that space to support the creative streamers. And then mm -hmm. they, the last one I went to was in 2018 and they put it in a pretty great spot, I thought. So it was, it was just a really neat experience. Um, what That's kind of, cool. what kind of conventions were, were you going to? Like, did you go uh, to like the Comic-Con or? Yeah, mainly comic conventions. I, I attended um, San Diego just as a spectator mm -hmm. um, way back, but I've never been there as a vendor. Um, but a lot, like we have, um, Fan Expo Canada up here in Toronto. So, oh, um, I nice. attend that every year. So that's nice. Cause it's local. I did Halcon. I did, uh, uh, I don't know, a whole bunch. Yeah. I travel all over, um, Calgary Fan Expo. Um, yeah. So I had a lot more booked this year. Actually, I was going to do Boston for the first time. Oh man. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. wow. Lots of, lots of travel credit everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 myself, I was like to this, like this year's the year I'm going to just yeah, go yeah, and yeah. do, and it didn't work out that way. Um, yeah. but I noticed there was, um, there's been some really interesting things sort of cropping up, um, now and again. Uh, I saw somebody, uh, did, um, one thing online. I can't remember what it was called. I wasn't involved in it at all, but it was like a digital marketplace that mm. was reserved for people. Like if you could show proof that you were going to be attending an artist mm -hmm. alley for 2020, um, and had to cancel where you could go and sell your wares because, oh, that's um, cool. yeah, a lot of people don't, um, I think maybe take into consideration the effort and money it takes to like generate a massive amount of items to sell at a yeah. large convention. Um, yep. so there were people who, you know, you drop, you know, hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars and they had no place to, to put it all and you can't return enamel yep. pins and stuff. So, yeah. um, yeah, they were having people sell, um, one of our, uh, wonderful hosts and instructors here on Adobe live. Um, everybody probably knows him, Mr. Andrew Hockrattle, um, started doing a really great thing twice a year called canceled con, um, which okay. I had, yeah, heard of that. yeah, I had like a really good time cause I got to be involved in that. And it was basically like, if you were going to be showing, um, at a convention or if you just wanted the chance to do a convention, that's like totally online. He, uh, set up a really cool, like revolving couple of days where people just kind of jumped in to a zoom call and did a presentation and, and, and were, you know, did like speaking and, and, um, some people did like, uh, demos and stuff like that, you know, and oh, you could, great. you could see it for free. And then, uh, it seems typically like the model for stuff like this is you could show up and you don't always necessarily have to pay for it, but if you can make donations, um, mm -hmm. to it, that's pretty cool. So it's kind of interesting to see, you know, how creatives have now started to function, um, yeah, in the, it's been a the lot new of age. Pivoting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been, yeah. it's been pretty cool, but I do, I, I do have to say, I really miss, um, being able to go to conventions cause I'm, yeah. I'm a cosplayer myself. Oh, really? Yeah. Who do you, uh, cosplay as? I cosplay Kylo Ren a lot. Oh, really? Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. hilarious. I cosplay Kylo Ren and I cosplay, um, I have like a dark side Ray cosplay that nice. I do. Um, and I have also done, um, Prince Lotor from the new Voltron. So I like oh, okay, paint myself cool. blue and I have the ears, but then I wear like casual clothes. So I have like a Voltron t-shirt and a studded belt and like skinny jeans. And oh I just my walk gosh. around like in my wig, but, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty fun. It's, it's pretty cool. Do, did you awesome. ever cosplay any of the conventions? Uh, no, because I'm behind a booth selling the whole time, but, um, but I mean, for Halloween, I've been like the Baroness from GI Joe. Yes. And, uh, my husband was Cobra Commander, and yes, kind of kind of cosplaying. I love it. I love it. I love it. I I don't know if I've. Was, I'm trying to see because I I mean I cosplay even when I'm behind the booth, but I have to say. Oh yeah. It's yeah. It's hard though. Like yeah. I had to modify the Kylo Ren outfit because I like made 
everything. Like, I, it was oh, heavy. Wow. And then I showed up to Saki Anime Summer, like, I can do this. And I ended up just sitting miserable with a fan angled down my cowl and, yeah. like, neck armor, like, just yeah. sweating to death. So um, I do usually do more, like, casual cosplays. But um, when I show up, the times that I've shown up just casually as a, as a spectator, um, I do a... Star Wars um, Imperial Pilots cosplay. Um, nice. So I have like the jumpsuit and the armor and stuff like that. Oh, that's awesome. Um, let's yeah, see. I just, as far as I go, is just kind of geeky t shirts. <laughs> nice, nice. That's about it. That's, that's, all I that's can good handle. though. That's good though because I feel like conventions are an excellent place to like acquire those too. Um, oh, so yeah. you can just kind of like wear your collection basically, totally. which works. Yeah. Um, also, yes, this is a cat, uh, Kylo Ren. Um, Chad Ross says Mew Mew Driver. I'm also <laughs> I'm also interested in that name, though I've been calling this one the name of the the actual uh, Kylo Ren cat, and that is Catum Driver, which I think is brilliant. Um, also, <laughs> I love that you are jumping into color already. I always do everything in grayscale, um, and this has oh, like yeah? a really yeah, this, this, but this has a really nice like contrast of like that blue and orange. I think is typically like a really great match. Um, mm-hmm. so this is starting to look really, really cool. Cool. Thanks. She's so sassy. She's <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the sass. <laughs> yes. Not playing around. No. Nope. I'm gonna see. I might, because I'm kind of doing like a more um uh kind of like cartoon-esque style for today. Mm-hmm. Um and I might, if I finish this one, um end up doing like dark side today and then like jedi tomorrow so we may also get yoda cat which is i'm excited (laughs) about yeah me too (laughs) i've done a yoda pug i haven't done a yoda cat yet that's a perfect dog to make right yoda (laughs) though like for real um i want to know what people in chat um are going to be putting together how many of you are going to be participating and what have you folks decided to do like what are your i want i want to get some brainstorming going in the chat what are you guys putting together let me look through our comments here and make sure i haven't missed any questions um umicron is talking about jan eric being the pun master he is actually the punisher um of the adobe chat um <laughs> Let's see. Reminiscing about favorite cartoons, eating huge bowls of fruity pebbles on Saturday mornings. That's that's about that was me watching um, the X Men Evolution cartoon nice. every Saturday morning. That was a good cartoon. It was a good cartoon. It yeah. had an excellent theme song. That was they were not messing around with that at all. <laughs> um, uh, it looks like more. Uh, Star Wars cat puns, Ahsoka Tano, which I I think is great for Ahsoka Tano. So mm-hmm. please please do it, Kerwin. Please make it happen. Don't let don't <laughs> let me down. Don't leave me hanging. Um, I'm trying to draw his little kitty cat fingies, and <laughs> and they're like, oh, they're so cute. Do you see it? his little hands? Yeah, I see it. <laughs> Uh, I love his hair. He has his great hair. It has to be like full Adam Driver yeah. hair, right? Oh like, yeah, it's yeah. gotta be. I'm I'm gonna make everything else like cartoony, but I'm gonna like render his hair like hyper real and just like luscious waves falling all over his cat head. <laughs> Let's see. I only do sandwich pictures. Please draw us a sandwich, then Reverb Mike. I'm I could use a sandwich right now. I love sandwiches. Yeah, Star Wars themed sandwiches. Oh yes, my gosh. please do. Um, and it, like a, like a, a blue milk on the side would work. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> So good. Um, let's see. X-Men cartoon. They just canceled it on TV over, uh, here when I was so into it. Really? Umicron, where are you? Um, or Umicorn, where are you from? I would like to know where everyone in the chat is from, actually. Um, I'm in Northern Cali, as you folks know. Um, and you said you were in Canada, correct? Yeah, Toronto, Canada. Yep. Nice. Um, and I want to know where you guys are from. Uh, Celine Pedron says, what about Sailor Meow for Sailor Moon? Yes, please do it. <laughs> please do it. Make it happen. You guys are the heroes that the creative world meet, needs. We, uh, we need more 
pop culture cat and dogs. So so please <laughs> do it. Trying to illustrate his lightsaber, which we're going to see how accurate I'm going to get this. I'm not sure what it's going to look like, but <laughs> I'm trying my best. I'm just kind of trying to sketch it in for now, and then we'll see nice. where we get to. I'm just working on her hair here. Oh, that looks great. Thanks. I'm trying to, um, cause I've got his, I've got his lightsaber like kind of angled across his body. So I'm making myself like a long straight line and then mm -hmm. I'm just going to block in shapes over the top of it instead of just trying to draw all the technical pieces of the lightsaber yeah. because that's kind of some slowing squares me down. and circles and I think you're good to go <laughs> yeah just like a boom there we go I think this will do it ta-da there's a lightsaber <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> that works got that in there and then I'm gonna put it on a lower opacity and then kind of sketch over it so I know what I'm doing here. Nice. Um, Mew Man, Masters of the Muniverse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like it. Um, Hall says, any tips on rendering? I'm having trouble getting to the next step after getting in rough shapes. Um, for me, I, uh, I do like my sketch kind of like I'm doing now. Um, and then what I'll do is underneath my sketch or over the top of my sketch on a blending mode, I will block in uh, values. And then after I have all my shapes and things in place, then I start detailing each portion of the piece. What about you, Alana? What is your, what is your um, process like? Because you're kind of yeah, doing it right now. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of, um, I sketch out the whole thing at first and then I kind of set it to multiply and I lower the opacity and then I just kind of block in the big shapes and then I lock the transparency and I just start rendering and I try to think of my which way my light source is coming in from gotcha. um yeah nice nice yeah so so I guess it's um maybe in a way it's a, a method of kind of breaking down different portions of the of the piece in your head and then just slowly yeah. chipping away at them separately exactly which is typically like how I do it I but like I said earlier I I start in grayscale um with all of my pieces and then I will use blending modes to add colors over the top and start um chipping away at the at the pieces later um in full color because that's just oh, that's cool. you know what comes naturally to me um, yeah, that's an interesting technique. Yeah, it's. I think it started out really as me not really being very comfortable, in all honesty, um, mm -hmm. creating pieces in full color right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, I really struggled with choosing colors that worked well um, together and doing things that were um, like gonna be dramatic lighting and all that kind of stuff and trying to keep that in my head and focus on how I was going to execute that idea at the same time as me trying to like figure out what I'm actually gonna be drawing. Um, yeah. So I started doing them separately and then I learned a little bit more about color and started doing more in that aspect but I was so comfortable after so many years of just doing things that way that it's kind of my my default now. Yeah your go-to. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, I actually, um, I started out as, well, I went to an art high school and then an art college and in high school I was an oil painter and then in college I picked up acrylics and then, yeah, all my acrylics dried out as I went digital, <laughs> which is kind of sad. But, I don't think um, I've ever heard of that before, an art high school, like just yeah. there were lots of art classes offered um, or was it specifically for artists? Yeah, it was specifically for artists. So you could major in dance, drama, music, theater, um, what? music, or visual art. And you had to get in by portfolio. And it was like grade nine to grade 12. And um, if you failed your major, you pretty much get kicked out because that's the reason you're there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, but you had normal like science class and English and all the, the rest. But 
lots and lots of art classes. So it was I have awesome. Never so heard good. of that. What? Yeah. How yeah, cool I was is really that? Lucky. Is that like a a, a common thing um, in Toronto, in or is that? Um, we have quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, that is so. It's neat. not that common, but yeah, it exists. <laughs> Um, Hal says, awesome, thank you for the tips. I'd like to know um, how, because maybe we can offer you some further advice based on, you know, your work specifically. Um, what, you know, what seems to be the thing that comes naturally to you? Are you like just totally lost when you begin? Or do you have something that you gravitate towards when you go from lines to, uh, to rendering um, and you maybe don't know how to get through that step to the end. Um, uh, Umicorn is also talking about Mew Man. If I don't see any He-Man cats, I'm going to be <laughs> so sad. I'm going to be so sad. Okay, I've got my Catam driver in place. He is ready to rock, as the cool kids say. Um, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's what the cool kids say. Uh, we were we had our conversation already um, today about how sometimes I do feel old and not with the times, like when I'm trying to decipher what exactly TikTok is for and <laughs> and all of that. And the source of ADD. <laughs> yes. I I just can't I can't do it. And like you had mentioned Me all the reels and stuff with uh, Instagram and I found out about the reels after the fact, like I said, because somebody in the Adobe live chat was like, what are you guys doing? Like, do you, do you add reels to your graphic design packages for clients now? And I was like, what oh are reels? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I missed Instagram's something. Instagram's TikTok. Yes. Yeah. Cle clearly I have, I have skipped over something and don't know what to do. Um, so that's something I had to look up and check out. And I instantly was like, I don't even know what I would use this for. What does one <laughs> create? for this sort of thing. Um, yeah, it seems like little short clips of video and then you put music over top and I haven't tried it yet, but I see a lot of artists doing it kind of to show their process. Yeah, it seems- so uh, it could it be interesting. Cool. It's It seems but, like kind of a nice new form of like, here is a long process or a lot of art information in a very short span so that more yeah. people can, can kind of consume your content as they just scroll through and make their way through their, their daily exploring of Instagram and TikTok, yeah. um, which is kind of neat. I, just as a creator, I just find it all very overwhelming. It's like, you know, I already spend so much time on my Instagram marketing myself like every day and stuff. And yeah, it's uh just another thing to add to the the heap. <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, let's see. Kerwin says, "Isn't TikTok when two ticks talk to each other?" Yes, that is <laughs> that is TikTok. That's what it is. That's what it does. Um, that's all I know, anyways. Okay, I've got his hair blocked in. I'm also going to. I think one thing, um, if I can offer any advice to um, folks in chat who may be newer um, to the process of uh, creating art and um, kind of like, uh, I think it was, uh, was it Hal? Yeah, Hal, um, who find themselves stuck at certain portions of the beginning of their paintings. One thing I really like to do, and I'm going to do it now, is I turn my canvas to a different shade, um, be it gray, or sometimes I will work with like a rust colored background. Um, if I am going to be maybe working in color, but not like a very, um, expansive color palette. Um, I did a few of the, I did a series of Mandalorian helmets where some of those I started directly in color with like earth tones and rust colors. Cause it was similar to like just working in grayscale. Um, nice. and I, 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 I feel like it takes a lot of the, um, the, mis the mystery of like not knowing what to do on your canvas. Um, yeah. it, it makes it look a lot less blank. Um, things aren't so scary. Um, and it makes your own work feel more approachable, uh, if that makes sense. And like right now I almost feel like it's not, I'm not looking at a blank canvas. I'm not looking at something that's scary that I have to fill with my own concepts. Now, um, it's full. I just have to, add some details to it, which is kind of how it 
more how it feels. Um, so nice. try that. Try that if, if, you're, if you're feeling a little lost in your work and the blank page is a bit overwhelming um, because that could very well help you um, manage it a little bit better. That's great advice. Oh my gosh, Jan Eric, you are the pun master. He says, I can't stop smirking looking at that Uma Perman drawing. <laughs> and I, ooh, that's good. So good. Didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> Didn't cross my mind either. It's so perfect. I feel like Jan Eric is just like a factory of puns. He just sits at his <laughs> writing desk day after day, just just jotting them down, just just <laughs> writing them and waiting for his opportunity to strike with them. Uh, Hal says, right now I've been doing the outline, then coloring that in, and then using some custom smudge brushes to get rid of the hard brush lines, if that makes sense. Um, well, I, I, I think, and I don't know um, how things are with you, Alana, but I, I typically paint my lines into my piece. I, there never comes a time really in my work where I just hide my line layer because it's good enough without. Um, I am the kind of artist where I always think that my sketch looks way better than my final <laughs> like painting um yeah. once i start rendering it i'm like where was the the coolness from the early version sketch though so i leave <laughs> it in there and i kind of try to keep some of that um that vibe with it um what about yeah. you do you ever remove your lines or um yeah I, I i do i i usually try to like you know get to the form of things while i'm painting um sometimes i'll do uh like the sketch line work underneath and then I'll I'll throw a line on top of everything, mm -hmm. but um, but usually, especially for my geeky pet stuff, I just kind of use light and shadow to define the shapes rather than line. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I think I think maybe that comes about at least for me um, because when something is in sketch form. Um, it's very impressionistic, right? You, yeah. you know, there's a lot of, there's like a world of possibility where the piece is concerned. Um, and sometimes when you start rendering stuff out, uh, like perfectly and trying to get your particular vision across, especially maybe when you're at the beginning um, of your art journey and you maybe need a little work in certain areas, starting mm -hmm. to execute those ideas over the top of a sketch that had more open to the, the world of interpretation, um, things can start to kind of feel a little lackluster in that process. Um, yeah. But I notice, yeah, when I, when I keep my lines, um, I'm less likely to render something into like overkill zone. You know, yeah. like when you keep working on it and chipping away at it, because um, I'm not fun. hunting for those lines anymore. I'm not hunting for that thing I loved. I can still see them. Um, mm -hmm. And then also keep in mind that like when you're working and, and when you're creating something, nobody else really knows like what's going through your head in that regard. So you also can inadvertently be kind of keeping yourself to a level of expectation that nobody else is even thinking about um, because they're not in your head uh, trying to execute certain ideas. So, um, when you, when you stay a little loose with it, um, and you're not so hard on yourself as far as what you need to render into your piece, uh, I think it, it flows a little more naturally. And if certain things don't wind up in the painting, nobody knows because nobody else <laughs> is you. So <laughs> that's true. Jan says rated R for RAR. Oh my gosh. Okay. The, the pun masters are out today. It is not a joke. <laughs> I get quite a few of them at my booth at conventions, that's for sure. That's great. Uh, Kerwin <laughs> says, add a dog and we can call it pup fiction. I'm, I'm, uh... I'm into it. <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> This was a this was a fabulous idea, Alana. Um, oh, I knew I knew that yeah, they no were gonna be into it, but I am very pleased that everyone is just as excited about cat puns as we are. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is perfect. It works. It works. Yes. Um, I would also like to point out that I am using that brush pack again from our wonderful mod in chat, Sam Peterson. Um, I am using the buttery brush, which I was warned by Sam Peterson himself um, that the magnitude of butter 
um, might be too much for me to handle, but I think I'm, I think I'm making, <laughs> making it okay. It's literally called, um, buttery brush, I think, uh, in the butter brush. Yeah. Butter brush. Butter um, brush. and it is, I'll, I will say it is extreme levels of butter. Like this is like Orville Redenbacher levels <laughs> of butter. Um, but it, it's a, it's a very nice smooth brush. So I recommend it, uh, to anyone oh, looking great. to try it. It's pretty grand. Chad's like too buttery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Sam. I think uh, I I I I kind of have like a set of like a handful of um, things that I like to use brush wise. Um, yeah, me too. I I like to have like a really um, kind of crispy line brush. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I like to have a textury, like chalky brush and a kind of blur brush, like something that's, that's kind of, um, like an airbrush of sorts. Um, mm -hmm. what are, do you have like go-to brushes or like certain kinds of brushes that you kind of need to use when you're creating, or can you pretty much design comfortably with any kind of brush? Um, I can design comfortably with any kind of brush but here are some of my favorites i like the hard round i like um kyle t webster's paint Ooh, box yeah. uh gouache go go it's great gouache go go texture yeah, yeah so textury i love it and then i've got hard pastel a grungy inker thick to thin if i do decide to do a, a an ink line on top comics letter fixed variable and then of course a pencil for the sketching pencil will also come in sometimes um because it's like a nice thin texture brush nice. and I'll come in with that w with um with Keller as well nice nice I love it um I yeah and I, I wonder um in chat if there's anyone else that has like a particular formula like a like a brush formula that they work with because um as you say I think I think I can too like pretty much create with any kind of brush but there's something about like a textured brush that makes me feel, even though I'm changing, I'm using the same stylus and changing from um, setting to setting in my brushes. Mm -hmm. I, when I use a textured brush, I almost feel like I can feel that texture, which is yeah. what gives me like the, the ease of use and comfortability when it comes to um, designing. Uh, so does yeah. anybody else feel like that? Uh chat says give them all a little pat of butter no no <laughs> no can i add pa dameron oh no mm. i maybe maybe pa dameron would be better for like the good guys for tomorrow um because i was gonna do a yoda um but i don't i don't know that there's like a cat pun for yoda's name mm. unless the the pun masters want to come up with one um, if you guys can, if you guys can come up with a good pun, that's better than Pa Dameron. Um, I will, I will do Yoda. Otherwise I will do my best to do, um, to do that other one that you just suggested. Um, and that would be like a second, a second Star Wars character with like a luscious head of hair, which is fine by <laughs> me. <laughs> All these great heads of hair. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, Uma Thurman here too with her bob. I know. It's just I think we like we we inadvertently accidentally found ourselves in the midst of another theme um, <laughs> today that was not planned, but surely welcome. Great hair. <laughs> I'm starting to um, give Cadam Driver his signature glossy waves, um, nice. and I'm very happy with them. I'm I'm starting to get super excited about this i'm gonna start adding some shine pretty soon and just make him fabulous <laughs> it's gonna be awesome uh and i see i see like chat has got you know their list pretty much worked out for what they're gonna be creating so i swear i awesome. gotta see i want to see a i want to see a he-man cat tomorrow i want to see some x-men cats tomorrow um, if anyone would also like to do Cadam Driver, I will never say no to other Star Wars cats, you know? That's <laughs> totally fine. Um, I can't wait to see what everybody comes up with. Um, I'm self-made. 
uh, then coming to digital art and something you talk about have, has different meaning to me, like rendering or automatic technique for a program to make pictures from 3D forms. Robert, you were correct. And this is something that I have encountered um, many mm. times before. And that is um, folks who come from a 3D background um, may feel... Uh, you know, that that word has a different meaning. Because I, I also use ZBrush, and so whenever you render something out, or if anyone here uses like Adobe Dimension or something, when you render something, you are taking that 3D form in that um, space, and you are uh, rendering it out and kind of giving it like that realistic feel and, and solidifying all those textures and, and bringing it to its, its final form, you might say. Uh, for all of you uh, Goku fans out there, all you Dragon Ball Z nerds in the chat, um, and and so that's what that's what uh, what rendering can mean to a lot of people. But rendering is also a term um, that two D uh, artists use to define the process of going from a sketch and then rendering it into like more of a 3D form, um, kind of giving it a more realistic ef effect um, with illustration, sort of like I'm doing here now, um, if I can zoom in on the on the Cadam driver hair, um, I'm kind of giving it, you know, rendering it into this more solid um, uh, hair strand kind of vibe instead of it just being, you know, lines. So that would be the reason for that. Uh, so if you ever hear it um, in the context of uh, 2D illustrations, that's what it means. Let's yeah, see. just adding light and dark, right? Yes, yeah. Like kind Different of adding shape values. And form. And yep. Indeed, indeed. Um, Let's see, who would have thunk that Val was doing Star Wars? I know, Jose. <laughs> I have never heard of the war in the stars. Um, I have no knowledge or recollection of anything of the sort. What do you mean, sir? Gosh, his hair is glossy. I'm so excited about this. This is just like one more Adam Driver I can put in my portfolio for a reason. <laughs> You know, do you have a whole Adam Driver portfolio? <laughs> I have a whole Star Wars project on my Behance um, that I have created um, just to put all of my Star Wars work in there. And there are like, there's only like seven or eight characters that are illustrated there, but mm -hmm. there's like four separate Adam Drivers that are, <laughs> that are, in, the, that are in the actual thing. So, um, so yes. <laughs> yawn with all of the oh and tim is in here too Ka kai meow ren all right okay yes yes of course it is um kai meow ren it's i actually did like the chronicles of ben solo that's what the the movie poster um title is going to be um and then it just says starring Cadam driver but i could do the adventures of kai meow ren starring Cadam driver um, because that just gives me two puns to work with. That could be, that could work. Nice. We have got Tim, Sam, and Jan Eric, and Kerwin, and Chad in the same chat now. And the the pun levels are about to become devastating. It's about to get really <laughs> crazy in here. Ugh. Let's see. Uh, we are going to, however, um, be taking off um, in just a couple of minutes, though. I can't believe that we are already oh at the end um, of our rope. Um, so why don't you um, zoom in? Um, I can kind of full screen your work just to kind of give people a um, show of your piece here. I'm going to come over to our single screen um, and get your webcam over here and then we can kind of take a look um, at your work there we go um, so sure. we've got yes it is looking so cool um, she is just reclining having a great time she is so fabulous <laughs> I love it I love it I love yeah. it and then we're gonna get to see like Cat Travolta and Cat Samuel L. Jackson in the back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. eventually. So maybe we'll save these guys for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, and then I'm gonna zoom in um, on my own here, and uh, we can take a look at 
uh, cat of driver's luscious hair. He's got his little angie face on because he means business, um, and he's kind of got his little his little dueling saber um, there. He is ready to um, rock. Um, but we are we are coming towards the end of our stream, um, so definitely please follow uh, Alana and uh, me on social media. Uh, we will have links posted um, in the chat where you folks can find us um, on Instagram. Um, uh, Give us a follow. Uh, we'll be posting, I'm sure, like these uh, pieces when we are finished. Um, Alana, it has been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. You are a joy. It's been great hanging out with you. Thank you for being <laughs> here. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, Thanks for, for joining me. us. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Um, we'll do it again <laughs> tomorrow. How about that? <laughs> awesome. Uh, so you guys rock. Thank you so much. Um, and I will uh, see you folks tomorrow. Adios, everyone. <laughs>